Hello, everybody. So today we're going to talk about uh, section one in chapter three, which is introduction to integers. So in chapters one and two, we basically focused on whole numbers. Now, if you remember what a whole number is, a whole number starts at zero and it just keeps getting progressively larger. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. Well, integers finally allow us to start working with numbers on this negative side. So negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three, and so forth. Okay, now these little dots that I drew on the outsides of this set just mean just keep going. That's what I mean. They're called ellipses and it just means to just keep going. So integers are positive and negative whole numbers, including zero. So like I said, now we got this whole negative side of the number line that we can be concerned with. So real quick, if I drew a number line and I asked this question right here, I said, go ahead and show me or plot where negative two is. You would just put a dot right there at negative two and call it a day. Okay. Now integers are used everywhere out in nature or real life, I guess. Um, for example, you may have a mountain. Okay. So this is a mountain and this mountain may be, let's say uh, a height of 3000 feet. Okay. And at the base of the mountain, you have a nice little lake. And we would call that sea level. And then underneath inside the lake, you have like little fish. That's supposed to be a fish. Sorry, my artistic ability is not good. But you get the idea. This is a fish. And this fish could be swimming at negative 12 feet. So if we think of sea level as zero feet, then you can see where we use integers in real life. Other places would be... Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, your bank account, when you get a loan, you owe money. That's a negative balance. And you have to keep paying money into that until your balance is zero. Um, other things would be like a temperature, like a thermometer or something like that. Uh, you know, zero degrees Celsius uh, is the freezing point of water. Anything above that is going to be warm. And anything below that is going to be extremely cold. Okay. So the th next thing I want to go out of here is just let's understand how to compare integers. All right, so we're going to compare integers. And in order for us to do this, we got to know two things. And the things that I'm talking about are called inequality symbols. Okay, inequality symbols. Now, I always read inequalities from left to right. That way we avoid any confusion. So... Real fast, I'm going to just write a couple inequalities, and they should make sense. One, and that symbol right there is, is, is read less than. So one is less than three, and that makes sense. The other one could be, in this situation here, this, is, this would be 10 is greater than 2. Okay, so the symbols, that symbol right there, like I said, is less than. We'll write it underneath. And then this symbol right here is greater than, and we always read them from left to right. Now, the question becomes, let me write it like this. Determine which inequality symbol to use. to form a true statement. And I'm going to do, uh, I'll do a couple examples here. So the first one, it's going to be this. The second one will be that. Okay. So what I have right here is like a little box. And our goal is to form a true statement when I read this from left to right. And we're going to use the inequality symbols to actually do this. Now, the key to comparing integers lies on the number line. So if you look at this number line right here, let me try to clean this up here a little bit. All right. So if I were to take those numbers, negative one and negative three, and I were to plot them, 
So here's negative 3, and here's negative 1. All right, the number further to the right is always the larger number, okay? So let me write that down, because that's, that's basically like a rule for us. So we'll put like a little star. The further right number is always larger. So in this situation, negative 1 is greater than negative 3. And in part B, well, if you think about this, if we have another little number line here, as you can see here, negative 10 is to the left of negative 2. So negative 2 is larger, but we need to make this true statement here when we read it from left to right. So negative 10 is less than, pot, or I'm sorry, negative 10 is less than negative 2. Okay, so hopefully that makes more sense. Now we can clarify it. And what's nice is, we, like I said, we have this, and I'm going to put a big black box around it. There we go. We have this, this rule that the further to the right a number is, it's always going to be larger. So the next thing I want to talk about are opposites. Because that's really what a negative symbol out front means. It means the opposite. So, for example... When I read this, like sometimes we read it as negative three, and I agree 100% with you. In fact, that's, that's how we read it 99% of the time. But the concept behind it is that negative symbol out there means like, it means like the opposite. So if I, if I ask you to find the opposite of each number. Okay, here's part A. So we'll put a 5, and then part B we'll put negative 2. Okay? So if I ask you to find the opposite of each number, then all you have to do is put that opposite sign, which is a negative sign out front. So the opposite of positive 5 is negative 5. And you can think of this, once again, as a number line. So if you're starting off with negative 5, which is five units away from zero, the opposite of positive five would be this negative five on the other side. Same thing applies to this negative two. Now, remember, when I'm asking you to find the opposite of each number, you got to put a negative in front. Now, many of us might have seen this before. So I'm going to put this negative, negative two. And when I think about this, I think, what is the opposite of negative 2. Well, the opposite of negative 2, okay, is positive 2. Now, many of you might have just been told or taught, you know, previously, that if you see two negatives back to back, just like I have here with parentheses around one of the numbers, then you automatically make it a positive. And now hopefully you understand why. Because once again, on a number line, <coughs> excuse me, if I'm starting at negative 2, which is what this problem is asking me. Let me highlight that. So if I'm starting with negative 2 and the directions say, find the opposite of that. Well, the opposite of negative 2 is going to be on the other side of 0, which is positive 2. And that's how I came about the answer, positive 2. Okay? Now, the one thing we do have to be worried about, okay, is going to be evaluating. So if I wanted to evaluate negative n when n equals 2 and n equals negative 3, well, you've got to be careful with this. Anytime we evaluate, remember from the previous videos, that means the substitute. So what I like to do is rewrite the original problem, so negative n, then directly underneath I'm going to put it in parentheses first, and I'm going to do the first problem. So the first one problem just tells me substitute in a 2. So that's what I did. Now, this is going to equal negative 2 because I just have a 2 inside the parentheses, and then I'm asking myself what's the opposite of positive 2. Well, in this case, it's going to be negative 2. Now, the beautiful part about making a video is I can just erase this because you can always just rewind. And I'm going to do the second part. So the second part says... 
substitute in negative 3. Now, in this case, I have the opposite on the outside. Remember, that's the opposite. So this is asking me, what is the opposite of negative 3? Well, we have two negatives back to back. And the grouping symbol are parentheses. So that's going to be a positive 3. Okay? Now, the next thing we're going to go over is this thing called the absolute value. All right? And we've already been exploring and using the absolute value throughout this entire uh, video so far. <clears throat> so I think it's best just to start with an example because I think some of us in this room, you may be sitting there thinking, well, I, I, I think I know the absolute value. So I'm going to ask you this question. What's the absolute value of 2? And what's the absolute value of negative 2? So pause the video, take a second, write it down, and then unpause it and see if you get the same answers as I do. So the absolute, the absolute value of 2 is positive 2. And the absolute value of negative 2 is also positive 2. So the question becomes, why? Now, if you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, well, because absolute values are always positive, that's not a good enough answer because that doesn't explain the concept behind it. That is more like a, uh, hey, I told you to memorize this, so just memorize it. Okay? So let me show you why the absolute value of 2 is positive 2, and the absolute value is of negative 2 is also positive 2. And it all comes down to understanding what the absolute value really is. And the absolute value is a measure of distance. Now, if you think about distance, here at this little dot, well, I don't have to draw a dot. We'll draw a little house. All right, so here we're standing. And your goal is to go to the park. And the park is all the way over here. So here's the park. And I'm going to draw, let's see, what, what are at parks? Uh, basketball courts. I like basketball courts. Little hoop, little hoop. There you go. So there's a basketball court. Now, if you have to drive to get to the basketball, uh, or to get to the park, you get into your car, and you're going to go from here to here. And let's say that distance is five miles. Well, Inside your car, you have that odometer that counts the number of miles that you've driven, and your odometer is going to increase five miles. Now, once you're done with the park or playing basketball and you want to go home, you come home, that is another five miles. Now, your odometer doesn't go backwards because you, can't, because you, you drove to the park and then came back home. It keeps adding up that distance. That's exactly what the absolute value does. So when we think about the absolute value... We're thinking about the distance away from zero. Okay? Because remember, the absolute value is a measure of distance. So in both situations, we are exactly two units away from zero. And that's why the absolute value, as some people would, might say, is always positive. It's always positive because it's a distance away from zero. Now, there are some things that we have to understand with the absolute value first. When we think of the absolute value, the absolute value bars are considered to be grouping symbols. So we treat them like parentheses when we're simplifying. But we do have to be very careful, and here's why. I'm going to give us two problems, and uh, they're both going to be very different problems. So here's the first one. The absolute value of negative 12, well, it, remember, it's a distance away from zero, so it's going to be positive 12. But here's the difference. Notice here I have this situation here where it's two negatives back to back again, okay? And like I said, here we got to be careful because we treat the absolute value as a grouping symbol first, which means we have to simplify the inside of the absolute value first, okay? So the inside of the absolute value is going to be 12. Now, you still have that negative sign out front. And what this is asking me is what's the opposite of, of positive 12? 
So our answer here is going to be negative 12. So, and I'm going to write this out. I'm going to scroll up here. And here's what we have. If we have a negative and then the negative 12 or any number, but if we have two negatives back to back and that grouping symbol is parentheses, the answer is a positive 12. Because remember, what this is saying on the left-hand side is what's the opposite of negative 12. However, on the right-hand side, you have to evaluate the absolute value of negative 12 first. Then you're going to say, okay, well, what's the opposite of positive 12? And that's going to be negative 12. So these two answers are not equal to each other. They are different answers. So that is the only place where you really need to be cautious when you're simplifying things, okay? So the last thing I want to do here in this, in this section is just go over just some simple simplifying. So we're going to simplify using the order of operations. All right, and we're going to do it. We're not going to do a bunch. We'll do a couple. So here's our first one. So this is the absolute value of 9 minus 5 minus the absolute value of 7 minus 6. Remember your order of operations. They do not change. However, parentheses, you got to add. So remember, you have parentheses. You have brackets. You even have these braces. And now you got to add the absolute value in there. So if you see absolute values, simplify the inside first. So here I'm going to do the absolute value or I'm going to do the absolute value of 9 minus 5, so that's going to be the absolute value of 4. Now I'm going to do the absolute value of 7 minus 6. So that's going to be the absolute value of 4 minus the absolute value of 1. The absolute value of 4 is 4 and the absolute value of 1 is 1. So notice here now we are finally done with the p part, which is our grouping symbols. There are no exponents, there's no multiplication nor division, so the answer is just 4 minus 1, which is 3. Okay? Now we're going to do another one here. We'll get a little bit more intense. <clears throat> All right, so here is, the, is uh, part B. It's 24 minus the absolute value of 19 minus 3 times the quantity of 6 minus 2. So once again, we have these order of operations. And you need to be careful because remember, grouping symbols first. And you want to do the innermost grouping. So I need to take care of 6 minus 2 first. That's the innermost grouping symbol. So what I'm going to do is just rewrite everything exactly how it looks. Except... 6 minus 2 is going to be 4. Now, with inside the absolute value, I still have math I got to do. So when you read this, 19 minus 3 times 4, I have to do 3 times 4 first. So we're going to do 24 minus absolute value, 19 minus 12, because 3 times 4 is 12. Now we're going to do 19 minus 12. So that's going to be the absolute value of 7. The absolute value of 7 is 7. And then 24 minus 7 is 17. Okay, and that's going to be it for this, uh, this video. There are other things in the chapter, but we should already have a really good idea on how to do some of them, like translating expressions into uh, mathematical statements and um, just evaluating. So make sure you go over that stuff and I'll see you in the next video.